Hi, this is Jack from Alpha Charts with a state of the market video. Today is September 18th, 2021. Before we get started, this video is for educational purposes only. These are not recommendations to buy, sell, or hold any stock or security. And I may hold positions in some of the equities mentioned. Know your time frame and risk tolerance. All right. Um, also, if you like these videos, please like and subscribe to my channel. I really do appreciate it. And it really does help me out. So I thank you very much. If you could do that, please do it. Um, thank you. All right, here we go. Starting with the SPX. And so there's been weakness, obviously, the last two weeks in the S&P and the market. And there's two potential trend lines here. So I have this trend line that I drew in that price is already broken out. And you see we have a, um, a crossover, bearish crossover in the moving averages. And um, then you have this trend line right here. You know, and it's just a retest still has not broken it yet. Um, I think it's, you know, whichever one you, you look at, it's still a bearish look to the market. Um, so we'll see if this if this is the truer trend line right there, very subjective. So um, so we'll see about that. But um, but right now this is definitely a bearish look for the S P. And let's look at the RSP, which is the equal weight. Here's your RSP, and this is what I drew in. Um, I think I drew it in last week. If not, I drew it in some, and I posted on Twitter. Um, so you have this, you know, this little maybe shoulder, maybe head. You know, what do I kind of expect? Kind of expect there to be some type of little rebound here, and then it's either going to break down or obviously continue higher, right? Just because it looks like a head and shoulders pattern doesn't mean it is until. I think this again 152. That's uh, I think that's the line in the sand, right? If 152 breaks. I think you know coming down to 145 is likely, or at least 148, something like that. Um, but right now we're still in this kind of this pattern. Um, again, it's not just this gigantic on um, top. Maybe you say this is a larger shoulder, larger head, and maybe it does another shoulder here, and it's a bigger top. Either way, RSP. It has a bearish look to it, and as well as the SPX. And this shows as um, uh, this shows um, you know, breath is is still you know not very good at this point. Um, now again, it is near the support area, one fifty two. So you know, to get bearish here, maybe it doesn't make a lot of sense as far as positioning wise, because you know, if we do get this bounce, you're underwater immediately. So um, I, I have no shorts on personally right now. Look at the cues. So here's the cues. Um, you know, I put the Fibonacci's back in. I taken I taken them out. I know that um, just to remind everybody what which fibs these are. So I took I took the highs to the lows, and there's your extension, right? And then. You know, I was watching this 372, 373 area, roughly. Um, now let's go to the daily chart here. Now on this daily chart, you know, we're coming back and just kind of retesting it from the top. So it's not that big of a deal yet. But I think if it um comes back and again, 370 is the absolute, you know, area that I'm really, really watching. If not, this is just a retest of a breakout, which is totally natural. Um, but as of right now, it has that, again, a bearish tilt. We don't have the cross it, crossover yet in the cues, but in, the, in or the uh, equal weight cues, right? Um, here is the trend line I was watching in the equal weight, where it looks like we're gonna come back and try to test that within the next day or two, potentially. Um, but again, this, this uh, this goes with the whole, you know, weakening breath situation, and now is price just catching up to the weakening breath? Um, we're gonna find out. It does seem that way. So here's IWM, which eked out a small gain on Friday, but again has that. You know, it's underneath all the moving averages. Just doesn't look very good, and I think, um, you know, retesting this two eleven ish area is likely. And just looking here from price, it's about 5%. Um, 
And then it would just still be in a range, right? It didn't do anything out of character, even if it goes down another 5%, which would be extremely, 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 you know, hurt, you know, hurt, you know, feel real bad. Um, it's something IWM. IWO probably looks exactly the same, uh, maybe even a little bit better. So growth is doing a little bit better than, than the general market. Um, but again, basically the same. And if the market rolls, it's probably will roll with it. Come down here, it's probably the same 5%, roughly, yes. You know, because the markets tend to move together on a bear market. All right, let's look at some ETFs, financials, try to break out, have this nice little inverse head and shoulders, which, um, you know, we could easily point to, um, but it rolled over, never confirmed. You know, maybe you could call that a false breakout, right? And then boom, almost straight down from there. Um, you know, we don't know where it's going to go, but as an indicator, that's obviously a negative or bearish indicator for the market. Uh, looking at SMH, SMH, ugly date uh, yesterday, uh, holding up better than the others. Um, we still have, you know, you know, mostly bullish alignment, even though price did now cut through the nine day EMA. Um, so this could be the start of it rolling over also, looking for a retest of 258.50 or so. And that is about 5%, right? So all these markets are roughly 5% from any kind of major support. So it kind of um, coincide with each other. We'll see if SMH makes it all the way back down there or not. And, what it, and if it does, what it does when it gets there. Looking at lumber. Lumber, false breakout, boom, right back into now, back into this range. Um, we'll see if it makes it, you know, what it does here, but again, bearish tilt to it. Um, as far as that goes, just not looking good at all. It was, you know, future economic growth. That's what lumber kind of shows us. And so it has a little bearish, bearish tilt right now. We had still in a range. Let's be honest though, 83 is, is the big time level, right? So above 83. And this is just a small, nothing, you know, run of the mill correction, you know, um, just to check in the bulls a little you know, reel in the bulls a little bit. If it breaks 83, this could be a, a lot more. But now, breath stinks, and we're seeing all these ETFs, you know, that are, um, you know, maybe indicators not looking so hot. But let's look at now at bonds. And bonds are not confirming what we're seeing in the indexes and, and the ETFs I look at. So right now, I have to be in the camp of this is a run-of-the-mill pullback and not a major shift in the market, right? And so because we still have declining, tightening of bond spreads, we don't see winding. So the bond market does not believe that there's a systemic risk on the cusp. Um, that's good, right? So it, it's hard to be too bearish for too long if we don't see the bond market confirm, in my opinion. Again, 5% will hurt um, if, if you're fully invested or, or not hedged or anything like that. But to me, this says, hey, you know, whatever's going on in the regular market, we don't worry about it. Okay. The VIX, I would expect to be elevated. So it's about 20.8. Nothing crazy here, right? We can easily get to the top of this range and, and, and would be like, you know, in character. You know, in the Dixon, same thing. Nothing crazy, no gigantic spikes in them. So again, there's not this major volatility in the market um, right now. You know, but it doesn't look so good. Put call ratio. And as you can see, still one foot in the door, one foot out of the door, no signal. You know, it tends to say why there can't be more downside in the market to get into this area right here, or even better, this would be the signal if it got up here. So if we see something up here, for me, unless there's, you know, you know that, that would be a signal right there. Um, value line geometric index, again, shows weakening breath. Um, doesn't mean it has to come all the way down here to this major support area, and if it did, that's a 10% move, 8% move, something like that. Um, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think it has to get down. I mean, it could come down to here. It could come down to here, you know, somewhere here, come to here. 
So I'm not worried about getting all the way down here, um, but it is a bearish look to it. It does look like it wants to roll over, lower highs. You call these higher lows on the smaller time frame, um, but the moving average cross and everything else, it looks like the, the path of least resistance is lower. Um, let's look at MFI. Again, so breath yesterday in the last day or two hasn't been terrible, right? Um, and we do have, again, lower highs here, higher lows here, very similar to the value line geometric index. You have that bearish cross happening in the moving averages, um, percent of stocks above their 50 moving average is below it. And, uh, and yeah, so I think this could go, obviously, the path of least resistance probably is lower from the bigger time frame of, you know, there's a high, there's a high, there's a high, there's a high, and chances are, There'll be you know another high here and, and maybe lower lower percentage in the future. Looking at gold, yeah, I mean gold is no reason to be in gold. Zero, zero reason to be in gold. Let's go to the weekly. And as you can see, you know maybe it's making some kind of inverse head and shoulders, maybe, but this could be a month away. I'm sorry, month. This could be six months away, a year away, if it is to finish. You know, obviously. For me, this trend line right there, a break above it would be interesting. And then a break above 183, right? Gets above 183, gold becomes interesting again. Below that, I'm not interested in it. And again, as a um, as an indicator, it's not showing a rush to safety that, that people expect from gold. So there's that. Then looking at Bitcoin, I really need to redo that. Um, and it's on the weekly chart. On the weekly chart, we'll just look at it real fast. Looks pretty good. On the daily chart, um, where's the bars here? On the daily chart, yeah, I mean, it's holding up pretty well, right? I mean, yeah, this is real good shakeout right there, then some consolidation, and now it's trying to move higher. So Bitcoin as a risk on asset is is saying that they, you know, risk on, right? Um, yeah, looks good there. So let's sum it up. I should still cues. I mean, I think that good chance that we have some more downside coming to the market, especially into next week. Um, I think that, you know, the RSP is probably right now the one I'm watching the most to see what happens. And listen, we could get that bounce next week. It could happen the week after the week after, but with breath though, so weak and with, um, with now with, with that financials and, and SMH rolling over too, um, I think, you know, in lumber, uh, I, I think that likely more downside is, you know, or choppy action, right? It could be also choppy action um, is coming. But I don't still believe there's any systemic risk because we're not seeing it from things like the bond market. So so there's that, right? So we're looking for systemic risk and it's it's not quite there yet. Now, if the bond market starts to spike and, and, and loosen up, um, that would change my, my stance on this immediately. But there's no confirmation there for me. So this is now a buy the relative strength and um, and look for what's um, what's really standing out. And there are names out there that are really standing out and doing very well. Like I said, I'm about 60% cash, 40% long right now. And my 40% long is doing pretty good right now. I just cut all my laggards and, 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 and tightened everything up. And now I'm looking for things, you know, to potentially buy maybe into next week or the week after. We'll, we'll see how the market, what the market gives us. Um, but, but yeah, I don't see any systemic risk. And I think looking for relative strength makes a lot of sense, which brings me to tomorrow's video, which will be stocks to watch. Um, I am going to highlight the best of the best, what's holding up well, and, um, and populate a watch list and, and focus list that should be pretty good. Okay, so check that out tomorrow. I will post that video. Again, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at AlphaCharge365. Hope you all have a great day and great week next day. Next week. Bye.